As a wrestling fan, you must have heard at least a couple of scandalous rumours about the WWE, and then suddenly, no one is talking about them. That's because Vince McMahon has tried to keep a lot of these details hidden. You know what they say though, the truth always finds a way out. And this time, it has found its way on our channel. So stick around as we take you through the things Vince McMahon hides about the WWE. If you were thinking we'd be letting you in on those secrets subtly, well, think again, because we're starting off with the really scandalous case of Dawn Marie getting fired. Except you've been a big diva fan since the early 2000s, no one would expect you to be familiar with the name Dawn Marie. This lady broke into the wrestling scene in 2001 and made a name for herself. Dawn, alongside the likes of Tori Wilson, Nydia and Sable, completely became a superstar and remodeled the early 2000s of female wrestling. Sexy, holiday-themed outings, bikini contests, everything that over-sexualized era of women wrestling was about. Dawn Marie was at the forefront. However, suddenly, at the seeming peak of her career, with so many women joining the sexy diva roster, Dawn Marie got fired from the WWE. The final time she appeared in the WWE was when she got to manage her old tag team of the Impact players with Lance Storm again. As it turned out, Marie had gotten pregnant sometime in 2005, which led to her TV time being reduced. But the WWE didn't feel the need to keep her in the company anymore because a pregnant woman wasn't as much of an eye candy anymore. So their smart idea was to fire her under the wraps just because she was pregnant. You heard that right. They heartlessly fired an expecting mother without cause. At the time, everyone at the company loved Dawn because of her nice backstage personality and a number of wrestlers tried to make the company reconsider. However, none of these wrestlers were publicly vocal about it because it could mean that wrestlers were also getting fired. Remember, these were the early 2000s. The WWE had just acquired the WCW and the ECW, so getting fired would mean no mainstream wrestling gigs for you, seeing no one could lead the fight for her. Dawn Marie eventually decided to take the Stanford-based company to court, she filed a complaint to the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, arguing that her contract was wrongfully terminated. And as soon as news of these lawsuits got to Vince McMahon's desk, he knew he had to keep things hush. News of the company being so heartless would have attracted a lot of bad PR, so they reached out to Marie's representatives and reached a settlement agreement outside of court. The settlement fee has still not been disclosed, but we're pretty sure it was a hefty sum, because Dawn Marie and all parties concerned have kept quiet about the whole issue to date. After this hurtful experience, Dawn left the wrestling world completely, and now works as a nurse. And Vince McMahon got to keep his company's ruthlessness a secret. So yeah, it's all died down now. This next cover-up is definitely way more gruesome though, the Jimmy Snooker murder trial. The later years of Jimmy Snooker's life definitely marred his career, and because of this, younger generation wrestling fans will never grasp how good he really was. But get this, before the WWE had superstars like Hulk Hogan and Shawn Michaels, there was Jimmy Snooker. To be real with you, this guy just might have single-handedly led the company's transformation era when Vince McMahon took over from his father. This Fijian-American superstar dominated the entire wrestling world for the entire 1970s and part of the 80s. He was the first ever ECW World Heavyweight Champion and was known for his high-flying wrestling style that earned him the nickname Superfly. And the looks? Well, very few wrestlers till date have matched up his captivating look and aura. But behind all this glamour, Jimmy was a domestic abuser, just that he never quite got convicted for it even when it got out of hand. That was in May 1983, Jimmy had just defeated Jose Estrada on a television taping show in Pennsylvania, and later that night, he made a call for an ambulance. When the ambulance arrived, Jimmy's girlfriend, Nancy Argentino, was found injured, and although she was rushed to the hospital, she died soon after of some undetermined craniocerebral injuries. Apparently, she had suffered multiple brain injuries as a result of her head repeatedly being hit by a stationary object. And it gets worse. When a full-body autopsy was carried out, over two dozen cuts and bruises were found all over Nancy's body. Everything pointed to domestic abuse, and the signs were so glaring that the forensic pathologist in charge, Isidore Michalakis, and the chief coroner agreed that the case be treated as a homicide. 
However, the only eyewitness at the time of the incident that led to Nancy Argentino's death was Snooker himself. And when pressed about the cause of her death, Snooker said that she fell and hit her head. That was obviously a lie. And if anything made that more glaring, it was the fact that Snooker had been arrested for beating the deceased up only a few months before her death. Witnesses had seen him forcibly drag the naked Argentino down the hallway by her hair, and when the case was reported, Snooker pled guilty and was fined. Following this incident, Argentino sought protection from Snooker, but surprisingly denied asking for protection. Weird, right? Well, it was revealed during the investigation into her murder that Vince McMahon had talked her out of making that complaint against Snooker. And that wasn't the only role the chairman played in this whole mess. A month after Nancy's death, McMahon and Snooker had an off-the-record meeting with the assistant district attorney and three detectives in charge of the case. According to Snooker, in a book he wrote decades later, Vince McMahon did all the talking with the lawyers and gave the detectives a briefcase during that meeting with the assistant DA. What happened next? No charges were pressed and the case was left open. Coincidence? Of course not. We all have an idea of what that briefcase would have contained. All that came out of the case at the time was Argentino's parents winning a $500,000 default judgment against Snooker in U.S. District Court in Philadelphia, a sum which he never actually paid. While the investigations lasted, the WWE avoided featuring Jimmy Snooker at any main event, which shows that something was wrong. As soon as the charges died down, however, the company slowly eased him back into the action, and a few months after allegedly murdering his girlfriend, this dude was fighting in a steel cage match at Madison Square Garden and participating in the first ever WrestleMania event soon after. Snooker went on to have a full career with the company, getting an early Hall of Fame induction and even getting called back for various legend spots. The case did get picked up about 32 years later, with Snooker getting arrested and charged with third-degree murder and involuntary manslaughter for Argentino's death. But by this time, he had only a few months to live and was declared unfit to face trial due to his medical condition. Jimmy Snooker eventually died in 2017 and never actually paid for his alleged crimes, all thanks to Vince McMahon. This next case wasn't a murder, but it did see another wrestler getting away with something he should have gotten punished for. JBL the Bully John Charles Layfield had been known for many things in his life. As a wrestler, he was known as Bradshaw and JBL, a strong and menacing dude who won three tag team championships as a member of APA, held the WWE Championship for 280 days, and became the 20th Triple Crown Champion and 10th Grand Slam Champion in company history. Other than that, he's also known to have been an American footballer who got to join a couple of NFL teams as an off-season team member, and more recently, He's a financial expert who regularly features on Fox News and Fox Business as a financial commentator. On the surface, he's a well-accomplished man, but there's one side of JBL people don't know because Vince McMahon has managed to keep it hidden. JBL the bully. We know, given how bulky and tough literally every wrestler looks, it's hard to picture then getting picked on to talk less of bullying, but back in the day, bullying was a thing in the locker room and Layfield spearheaded the act. What started as a form of locker room hierarchy called the Wrestler's Court, where The Undertaker and JBL dished out punishment to anyone who they felt broke the locker room etiquette, soon turned into full-blown abuse by JBL. On one occasion, he ordered the Hardy Boys to drink and drive and throw their bottles at road signs. Yeah, that's definitely illegal. And when the brothers didn't go through with it, JBL insulted them every time he came across a hen and one time threw all their bags, clothes, money, credit cards and some other stuff into a dumpster. And it gets worse. For Blue Meanie, who worked in WWE from 1998 to 2000, JBL's bullying started with insults. When Meanie left the company, he spoke about JBL being an asshole in interviews. And then when Meanie returned for the ECW One Night Stand reunion PPV in 2005, JBL jumped him and beat him up. After leaving him in a bloody mess, Blue Meanie claimed that JBL told him that was his punishment for talking badly about him in interviews. There's also the case of Mario Ronaldo, who was a WWE announcer suffering from bipolar disorder who got bullied by JBL so much he left the company. While JBL has denied most of these allegations, when asked about hazing The Miz, 
He said, did I haze the Miz? Hell yes. A lot of people want to talk about me and my hazing. Yes, I did. I make no apologies about it whatsoever. Crazy, right? Crazier thing is, all these bullied wrestlers have said that the WWE was well aware of JBL's actions, but never deemed it important to address. Instead, he got a Hall of Fame induction, and even during that ceremony, this guy had the audacity to say this. I would like to say that to anybody out there that feels that I have wronged them. I would like to say from the bottom of my heart, cry me a river snowflake. I'm JBL. I don't apologize to anybody. I'm going to the Hall of Fame because I am who I say that I am. And I am a wrestling god. What did Vince McMahon do this time? Well, he honored Layfield even more with an ambassador position in the company. Moving on, we have the case of Stone Cold Steve Austin's domestic issues. Warning, if you're a big Steve Austin fan, this information we're about to dish out just might change how you view the man. Six WGGWE Championship titles, a two-time Intercontinental Championship winner, four-time Tag Team Championship winner, becoming the fifth Triple Crown Champion, a record three-time Royal Rumble winner, four WrestleMania headliners. The list goes on and on and on. Steve Austin will always remain one of the best to ever do it when it comes to professional wrestling. And seeing he achieved the most success with Vince McMahon as his boss, it's no surprise the chairman once again ignored every sense of moral rightness to cover up his employees' terrible misdoings. For those who remember, Steve Austin getting married to the stunning Deborah McMichael in 2000 was something like a royal wedding in the wrestling world. Steve was one of the biggest in-ring characters at the time, and Deborah was well known in the company for her managerial roles. They were one of those couples whose fans always shipped together. So seeing their love materialize into marriage was a fairy tale story. However, this story didn't have the happy ending we hoped for. To put it plainly, the details of their relationship were so dark and disturbing that it could have had an unrecoverable impact on the company they both worked for. And all these troubles stemmed from and around Steve Austin physically abusing Deborah. The extent to which this abuse escalated can't be stated exactly, but in 2002, the public got a glimpse of it when Deborah made a distressing call to the police, accusing her husband of beating her up. It all got out faster than even Vince McMahon could keep under the wraps, and the entire global wrestling community was put under a really dark cloud. The in-ring hero character of Steve Austin, which fans loved, had suddenly been destroyed by the accusations that he was, in fact, a real-life villain. After her distress call, the police showed up to see that Deborah had scars and fresh injuries as evidence of the abuse she had suffered. But Steve Austin wasn't at home by the time the cops arrived. And no, he wasn't on a wrestling tour or anything. Dude legit went on the run before the police got to his house. If that doesn't scream guilty, then what does? It took the police issuing an arrest warrant for Stone Cold for him to turn himself in, opting to plead no contest to the charges. He was eventually fined $1,000, made to complete 80 hours of community service and placed on a year probation. The couple got divorced soon after, but that wasn't the end of the whole issue. The WWE and Vince McMahon had sat in the shadows, watching it all unfold, particularly because the allegations against Austin came out too quickly for the company to act. However, when Vince stepped in, Deborah had an interview with Fox News. She not only detailed her ordeal on live TV, but went as far as claiming that Austin's actions had been fueled by the steroids and excessive alcohol he was on. The WWE refused to let the truth be revealed about their beloved employee because of the repercussions it would have on the company. So they backed Austin to deny all these allegations, and rather than cut ties with him, the company actively pushed him back into the hearts of fans, so much that many fans today have absolutely no idea the entire episode ever happened. Sure, this isn't solely Vince McMahon's bad, but his still supporting and standing behind an employee found guilty of domestic abuse says it all. He didn't get a chance to hide it at first, but he's definitely responsible for beating it down till it now seems like it never happened. We're not done just yet, though, not without mentioning all of the allegations against the fabulous Moolah. This case might not have as much concrete evidence as some others we've seen in this video, but it definitely counts as another case of Vince McMahon trying to hide things about the WWE. 
Without the controversies and drama, the fabulous Moolah would be up there with the best female wrestlers in history. She came into the game back in the 1950s and was the top female wrestler in the world before joining the WWE in the 80s. She'd spend the remainder of her career feuding with the likes of Cindy Lauper and Wendy Richter and winning multiple women's championships in the process. Moolah continued making guest appearances at many events until her death in 2007 after becoming the first woman to be inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1995. The WWE also honored her by renaming a number of events after her, but not for long. Almost as soon as Moolah died, news began to surface that she wasn't actually the fabulous woman she was portrayed to be. Quite a number of female wrestlers, including Wendy Richter and Mad Maxine, came out with claims that Moolah had sexually and financially taken advantage of the younger wrestlers she was supposed to train. According to these claims, Moolah was a sort of pimp who trafficked the wrestlers under her care to the rich and powerful men in the wrestling industry. From wrestling promoters to some male wrestlers, Moolah would send young females out to engage in sexual activities with these men, and those who refused would be raped. Like that wasn't bad enough, Moolah also underpaid the wrestlers in her care, and Vince McMahon was aware of this. The two had struck some sort of deal that allowed Moolah access to payment for every wrestler she trained. The late female wrestler was accused of having kept as much as 50% of the total payment for herself, whether or not she was involved in the matches. Why Vince McMahon let this go on is anybody's guess, but he did. And when these allegations were made, he revoked certain honors and memorials that had been put in Moolah's name. But that doesn't change the fact that he was aware of the misdoings all along and did nothing to stop them. Just before the last case on our list, we have a seemingly tiny cover-up that ended up leading to one of the worst tragedies in sports and entertainment history, the Chris Benoit cover-up. If you've stayed updated with our videos, you'd be familiar with the name Chris Benoit. And if you're not, you definitely should check out our other videos to be filled in on the details of this man. Long story short though, Chris Benoit was a former WWE superstar who in June 2007 horribly murdered his wife and his son before ending his life at the family home. The whole case is as gruesome as it gets, and the WWE observed a memorial for Benoit and his deceased wife, Nancy, who had previously worked at the company. Investigations and other research revealed that Chris Benoit's horrid actions were caused by some chronic mental trauma and perhaps substance abuse. But the thing very few people know about is that back in 2003, four years before the double murder-suicide, Nancy Benoit had attempted to divorce Chris. She had stated his violent temper and obvious mental breakdowns as the reason for wanting the divorce. Guess why the divorce never went through, though? Vincent Kennedy McMahon. Vince not only convinced Nancy to stay in the relationship, he also made sure the news of his superstar employee being mentally imbalanced never got out. Word on the street is that he also made sure friends and relatives of the Benoit family never spread the news of how troubled the marriage really was. Hindsight is 20, 20, but it's hard not to think about how that gruesome case of murder could have been avoided if Vince McMahon had not been so obsessed with protecting the image of his company. Lastly, we have a scandal that shook the world, the WWE steroid ring. How the company even recovered from this scandal is something pretty commendable, we have to say. It all started in 1991 when a doctor employed by the company, George Zahorian, got indicted for doping athletes with illegal substances. According to Zahorian's testimony, Vince McMahon was well aware of the entire scheme and actually propagated it to have his top stars looking more muscular and appealing. The infamous steroid trial revealed that the doctor's client list went from superstars like Hulk Hogan and Roddy Piper all the way up to the company's corporate chain and Vince McMahon himself. And not gonna lie, when you look at the cast of the promotion at the time, bulky men like Ultimate Warrior and superstar Billy Graham, one could say it was very obvious these guys were on anabolic steroids. Anywho, Zahorian got convicted and was sentenced to three years in prison, while McMahon was miraculously found not guilty on the count of conspiracy. How he pulled it off and still had the guilty athlete still working at the promotion is just crazy. But the crazier part is when, in the summer of 2007, over two decades after the United States of America v. McMahon, 
about 10 WWE wrestlers were again caught for doping. The investigation stemmed from the Benoit murders, which made Congress very concerned about the effects of performance-enhancing drugs on athletes, and boy oh boy did it yield results. It was discovered that the likes of Rey Mysterio, Booker T, Edge and William Regal were all on the client list of an illegal drug and steroid distribution website. Sure, Vince hasn't involved himself this time, but rather than let his employees face the consequences of their actions, he had it all covered up. When Sports Illustrated dug deep and exposed the truth, the organization applied a form of selective punishment for the wrestlers involved. The superstar likes of Randy Orton and Rey Mysterio were suspended for a little while and called back, while the less known guys like Chris Masters and Booker T were suspended and never recalled. What can we say? Yet another cover-up masterclass from the chairman. Which of these cases do you think is the most scandalous? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section, and before you leave, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Ring Rivals so you don't miss the next ones.